What's the word, y'all? Finally, we are here with the conference finals. Our last four teams. We're about to see who the best team this season was. And, and now I'm thinking, maybe this is a dumb question. Do you believe that because a team ended up winning the championship, raising the Larry O'Brien trophy, that that meant that they were the best team this season? Or do they have the best circumstances? They went against the best competition that matched up well for them. I can see both arguments. I guess the easy thing to say, hey, we play 82 games and if we won 16 games in the playoffs, we were the best team. But I, I could think of some years where maybe it weren't the best team, but it was the best circumstances is the easiest path. I don't know what, what it's going to be this season. Either way, we're here, man. And I know some people are disappointed in me because I didn't get out there um, with a conference finals preview video, but you could probably still hear it in my voice. I'm sick. I'm on the last day of the sickness, I think. And yesterday or the day before that, there was no, there was no way. <laughs> but today, we got the Boston Celtics Miami Heat game one, and the Miami Heat ended up winning this game. And three quarters, I guess two quarters in, it did not feel like the Miami Heat were going to be able to do this. They lost three of the four quarters, but that third quarter was all they really needed to protect home court. And and the Boston Celtics end up losing this one. That's what I'm looking at. It. Yeah, the Miami Heat had to win, but I feel more like the Boston Celtics end up losing this one once we got to the third quarter. Now, in, in the spirit of transparency, y'all know we are transparent on all of my YouTube channels. I try to stay as transparent as possible. Um, I did not get to watch the first quarter. Y'all know I have other obligations because I, I work for House of Highlights, and we did a draft lottery stream. Shout out to the Orlando Magic for winning the lottery and representing them right now. Um, and it ran a little bit long, and I missed the entirety of the first quarter of, of this game, right? So, like, I, I'm like, man, I got to get home. I'm like 15 minutes away away from where we shoot at from my house and I get into my car I'm like before I pull off let me at least put the game on so I can listen to it right so I can listen to it so I can hear the play by play so I, I ain't miss completely right and and as I'm driving home I hear Aaron Neesmith with the block Aaron Neesmith is getting minutes in the conference finals and I remember Marcus Smart, Al Horford, these are players that are out with injury and health and safety protocol. So next man up mentality. And though Aaron E. Smith shot 0 for 3 from the field, I thought he played really good for a guy that basically didn't play the entirety of the playoffs so far. He had three great blocks in this game, played some really good defense. Peyton Pritchard, next man up mentality, played great in this one. 18 points, other than him basically being hunted by Jimmy Butler once we got to the third quarter. Regardless, the next man up, uh, Daniel Tice, next man up with Al Horford being in health and safety protocol, they did their things. But that third quarter came around and things changed dramatically. First half, it felt like it was all Jason Tatum. Let me, let me find this man's stats. First half, he ended up with 21 points, 9 for 14 from the field. He had five assists, four rebounds, one turnover, uh, one block, one steal. He was setting up Robert Williams, who came out of nowhere with 12 quick points in this first half, and they looked really good. They looked very composed, and, and like I said, the other was showing up. Peyton Pritchard, 10 points going into halftime. The timeline was like trying to figure out, oh, is Jason Tatum top five right now? Is he top 10? Not a conversation that you really need to have, but th that's what they were having. They were saying that Jason Tatum is him, and I'm not denying that he's not, but I'm just saying that's what the first half was looking like for everybody. And then that third quarter came around. And then now it went from, oh, Jason Tatum is here to, oh, Jimmy Butler is him. Hemi, Hemi, Hemi Butler? Hemi Butler? Either, I don't really like the him thing. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I'm just part of the culture, I guess. I don't really like the him thing. Anyway, that third quarter came around and everything went to a halt for the Boston Celtics. 14 points in this one compared to the 39 points by the Miami Heat. They have 14 total points as a team and 11 fouls, 8 turnovers in this one. And some of these were downright disrespectful for the Miami Heat, bro. They, they were ripping the ball out of hands of Jason Tatum. They were ripping the ball out of the hands of Robert Williams. Robert Williams gets the ball at the high post and he's not, he not trying to do anything about it. Jimmy Butler, boom, rip him from the, the, from the weak side. Max Struess, boom, ripping people from the weak side. Victor Lipo taking the cookies of Marcus, nope, not a Marcus Smart, but of Jason Tatum and diving and getting the ball. The third quarter was like, whoa, this like this like varsity going against the freshman team. That's what it felt like third quarter alone, man. And in that quarter, Jason Tatum did not have a field goal. He had six turnovers to himself. And then in this one, Jalen Brown didn't get going into the fourth quarter. And at that point, like they were trying to make some momentum, make some things happen and stuff like that. But about a fourth quarter, it was like, ah, oh, it was kind of rough. The first three quarters, Jalen Brown wasn't really the factor that you needed him to be, especially Especially we consider Marcus Smart and Al Horford being out. And this team lost a lot of composure. And Ime Udoka said in his post-game interview, like, hey, it wasn't the young guys. It wasn't the people coming off the bench. It was our star players. It was our vets. It's weird to hear Jason Tatum be named as a vet because, again, he's still 19 years old. But he's been in the league for like five years at this point. So he tech, he's like a vet right now. He's he an all-NBA player. He's a vet right now. And, and Ime Udoka said it straight to the uh, to the podium. Hey, our vets let us down in this one because, I mean, you had a performance from Peyton Pritchard. You had his performance from Daniel Tice off the bench, Robert Williams playing so great, and you have like Aaron E. Smith again, though he finished with zero points, playing so good. You have all of that. You just need your star players to show up, and you had that in the first half, and in the second half, you really didn't. And this is where Marcus Smart really is important because Jimmy Butler? Oh, oh, no. 
Like I said, he had a good first half, but second half, Jimmy Butler went insane. In the entirety of the second half, he had 27 points, 8 from 11 from the field, and he shot 11 from 12 from the free throw line. And you know, I'm a Jimmy Butler fan as a guy that watched him from when he got drafted 30th, over, 30th overall in Chicago. I've been a fan of him the entire time. Seeing him not get no PT under Tom Thibodeau for the first season and a half to get a little bit and then him getting the starting lineup and them turning to an all-star and him being an all-NBA player and then him being a, a guy that led his team to the finals a couple years ago. I am a Jimmy Butler fan. But I got a lot of people in the comment section of my tweets like, Jimmy Butler be drawing them fouls like he harder. He be drawing them fouls like he Joel and B. But nobody talks about Jimmy Butler like he – like the other two and it's facts you know nobody nobody really talks about jimmy butler like they talk about the other two and you know what i think what i think it is i think even though the miami he were the one seed and was the best regular season team and all of the easter conference people didn't really watch the miami he play basketball this season or i guess in the last couple seasons because jimmy butler doing what he's doing right now is nothing new when he got to miami that first year he averaged nine free throws per game the year after it was eight and then this year is also eight he has always been a guy to draw hella fouls his last year in chicago he averaged nine free throw attempts per game this has been a part of his game for a very very long time and i think it's coming to the light now because well i feel like most people were probably maybe not watching the series that the miami heat had previously and it's probably why so many people picked the boston celtics because you don't really know what you're getting from the Miami Heat because you might not have watched it but this is what Jimmy Butler does he's going to try to find the player on the court that he believes he can score on the best and in this case it felt like it was a lot of Peyton Pritchard and he's going to either score on you or he's going to manipulate his body to draw a foul it's just the it's the way it is it's the way it has been and I can't necessarily be mad at him for it right now because you know you if you watch the Heat you know they could go through these dry spells for sure and what I can count on when you go through a dry spell is that Jimmy Butler get us out one way or another and the other is a lot of the time him drawing a foul i think there's a real legitimate conversation to say that jimmy butler has been the best player in the playoffs and that's saying something because we got luka Doncic on the other side but jimmy butler after today has had his third 40 point five rebound five assist game of this year's playoffs already insanity and then today he almost had a five by five he just need a couple more steals and a couple more blocks he's been absolutely insane like it's between okay let's okay let's make a little short list let's make a list all right i'm doing it i'm making a list of the top five players this playoffs alone I don't care about what your resume said. We talking about from game one of the playoffs to, to right now the conference finals game one. Let's make a little list. Luka Doncic. Are we good? Okay, check that off. Luka Doncic is on the list. Jimmy Butler, of course, like I said, he's the reason why we're talking about this right now. Giannis, Jason Tatum. I think I got to go John there. He only played nine games, but in those nine games, he averaged 27 points per game um, and he was killing it. 27, 9, and 8 for John Morant. So he's got to be on the short list. I don't know. Do we add people that got eliminated in the first round? Like, do Nikola Jokic deserve to be on an all playoff list if he only played five games? But in those five games, he averaged 31, 13, and 6 assists, 57 from the field. Only 28% from three. Nah, you ain't on your list. Nah, nah. You got to make it out of the first round to make my all-time list. And when you look at it like that, I feel like there has to be a Warrior player, right? It's got to be Steph Curry, right? He's averaging 27 points per game, 45% from the field, 46% uh, from three. He's only shooting 81% from free throw line. Steph, what the hell is going on, Steph? How, how we got you is one of the greatest free throw shooters of all time in the playoffs. You're only shooting 41, uh, 81%. So with that being our short list, Giannis, Luka, Jimmy Butler, Jason Tatum, Ja Morant, Brandon Ingram if they would have made it out of first round. But let's say um, uh, Steph Curry. Yeah, there, there's a chance that Jimmy Butler, I would say Jimmy Butler is no lower than two this play. Just, again, just looking at this playoffs, Jimmy Butler is no lower than two in my opinion. Luka Doncic is probably one. I think Jimmy might be two. <sighs> Like, how do I weigh Giannis versus Tatum? You know what I'm saying? Giannis didn't have much help because Chris Middleton was out, so he put up some crazy statistics, but he didn't get out of that round. Jason Tatum in a game six, where his, his team's back was against the wall, went nutty. I don't know. I don't know. And now with this win, no Cal Lowry for seven games of the playoffs. They're seven and zero without Cal Lowry being in the lineup. So they got to figure out what the hell they do once he's back. Does he do the good old Steph Curry thing? When Steph Curry came back from his injury, he came off the bench. Or do you put Cal Lowry back in the lineup, even though the last time we saw Cal Lowry, he did not look like 50% of himself because he's dealing with that injury. Decisions have to be made, and it's Eric Spolster. Now, I'm assuming he's going to make the right one because he's he, he's Eric Spolster, if you didn't know. But there was like in this third quarter, there was like a five-minute stretch where the Miami Heat took the ball out of the hands of the Boston Celtics time after time after time. The third quarter, let me see, how many field goals they end up with? They ended up with two total field goals in the third quarter luckily they drew some fouls they shot 13 free throws and made 10 of them you know so they ended up with 14 total points but they were struggling to get the shot up 
and when they got it up, they were bricking. So I'm ex I'm excited about the rest of the series, man. I I hope that Marcus Smart comes back for game number two. I hope that the reports about Al Horford potentially being there for game three is true because I never this is like one of my biggest fears going into these playoffs over the last couple seasons with the virus still being a real thing and make it's not nearly as normal now than it was like two seasons ago I don't want to see players miss time with health and safety protocols this is the height of everything Al Horford just had a series where he was incredible and he matters a ton and their chances of beating the Miami Heat in a seven-game series. So even if he's missing two games, that's very rough for their team. So I hope that at least Marcus Smart could come back because he's probably the best option that you have for, for uh, Jimmy Butler and just overall holding things down defensively. For the Miami Heat, you got a lot of other people, the others stepping up as well for this one. Max Struess ended up hitting some big-time shots after... The last couple games of the last series, I'm pretty sure he was struggling, or maybe that was just the last game. For some reason, my only memory is him, like, shooting, like, 0 for 6 or something, and that might have been earlier in the series or later in the series. I don't even remember. But in this one, big game was 17 points. He had three huge blocks. No, everybody had huge blocks in this one. Everybody. Jimmy Butler blocking Jason Tatum on a jump shot. Bam had four blocks. Gabe Vincent had three blocks. And then, like I said, Aaron Neesmith had three blocks. Robert Williams had two blocks. It was just a, it was a block party out there. It was absolutely a block party. But it was Gabe Vincent. Tyler Hero gave them exactly what they needed to. And then Victor Oladipo's defense was great. Um, And they were talking about on the broadcast that he's a former all-defensive player. And though he might not be a defensive player, all defensive defensive player anymore he's still better than a ton of players that you could potentially have in his spot I was a little nervous when um, um PJ Tucker went down with this injury this is one thing I love about PJ Tucker and hate about PJ Tucker y'all know he's a sneakerhead probably the biggest sneakerhead in all of basketball not probably he is right and because of that he be hooping in some stuff that's not necessarily known to be hoop shoes I think today he was hooping in some um suede red Jordan 10s that I'm just imagining a thirty thousand dollars I, I couldn't tell you if they actually are uh, but when he does stuff like that he's increasing his risk of like hurting himself <laughs> because he's not hooping in, in Kobe's or he's not hooping in like modern hoop shoes, but he hooping in some stuff from the 1990s or early 2000s. It's fire for the gram. But bro, when he hit that ankle, I'm like, oh snap, you gonna need him. You gonna need him. So I'm hoping that for the rest of the series, we get a relatively healthy series because I think this game is a lot closer if Marcus Smart is in it. I think it's a lot closer if Al Horford is in it, but I'm happy that the world is seeing that it's not gonna be a cakewalk for the Boston Celtics. Um, and I picked the Boston Celtics to win this series to be transparent but I didn't think it was about to be no cakewalk like some people thought it was going to be through the first quarter and a half you know what I'm saying I do believe this is a seven game series that I have Boston coming out of but it like I said it's not going to be easy to do the things that you have to do I'm a secondary Diamondbacks fan and I know this is a tangent but they are down 12 to 2 right now to the Dodgers earlier they lost 8 to 7 and it was a double header and I was like oh the bats are coming out not in the second game so I'm kind of disappointed in them right now but um it is the Dodgers who's really good and then we are the back the backs so we're not that good even though we're you know doing better than a lot of people expect it but whatever that's that's the 40 second baseball talk from Kenny Beecham I got a baseball channel if you want more of that I'm just saying I mentioned this a million times in this channel especially in the playoffs I'm a huge fan of seeing um changes changes from coaches just to see what you do from game one to game two game two to game three to keep your team competitive or to potentially win games and we have two of the best adjustment coaches in the league going head to head I mean I, I couldn't tell you exactly what the hell Eric Spoelstra did to change things up to make that third quarter as crazy as it is I don't know what type of pep speak he speech he gave to his team for them to come out there and just tear the ball out of the hands of the opponent but he did something Ime Udoka's gonna do something I don't know what it is you said maybe it's just like Marcus Smart is healthy and bada boom we're better but I don't know the only downside um, of us being in the conference finals right now is that there's only one game a day and personally when I make content I like to make content that's longer than like 10 minutes you know what I'm saying I'm also a YouTuber so the 10 minute mark is like a-ok -okay for me but like when I watch content I like longer videos but would it only be in one game a day how the hell am I going to stretch it to longer videos? Today, we can talk about the draft lottery, man. Like I said, the Orlando Magic end up taking it. And I'm happy for Magic fans. Oh, I'm even matching down to the Jays. You feel me? I'm happy for the Orlando Magic fans, bro. This last two years has been exceptionally great for them in their front office. They trade one of the best players in their recent history. And Nikola Vucevic get a first round pick that turns into Franz Wagner. Um, and they get Wendell Carter, who are building blocks. And then this year, they get the first overall pick. I don't know exactly what direction they should draft in. I'm not a draft expert. I know that Chet Holmgren and I know Jabari Smith Jr. are probably the top two candidates but I do not envy the person that has to make that decision because and what I have been reading 
It's like it's between those two and Paolo Benchero to determine who's one, two, and three. And let's be realistic. The likelihood of all three of them being extremely good is not very high. And when you have the first overall pick, the chance of you messing it up is just, just a little bit higher. That's all I'm saying. It's just a little bit higher. I personally would prefer to have the third overall pick. Give me the one that the other two didn't want. And now I could just use that as fuel for him. You and you know what I'm saying? You, People said you could have went one or two, and they ain't like you here. So we gonna take you because we believe if we had the first overall pick, we would have taken you. But I'm excited for them and their fan base. I'm excited for the OKC Thunder fans because they have a top pick as well, and they also got number twelve, number two, and number twelve. If I'm not mistaken, I gotta end this video soon. I, my voice is like going deader and deader by the moment. But the the more surprising thing is that the Sacramento Kings jumped up to the top four, and I'm very intrigued to see what McNear. Is that his name? McNear? McNeil? McNeil? Um, he's on the last year of his contract as the president or general manager over there in Sacramento. And he made some big old trades last season to bring in DeMontis Sabonis to uh to trade for Dante DiVincenzo, who seems like he's unhealthy unhappy with being there so i wonder would they be interested in trading that pick away or are they 100 percent drafting with it and then i think to myself what's out there to get for the fourth overall pick you don't you're not getting bradley b like what what would you even get are you trading down and getting a piece or are you just drafting with it and be like hey uh sabonis is like 26 De'Aaron fox at this point like 24 and now we got maybe a 19 year old and, and then we got davion mitchell who's like 21 22 and this is our core for the next four years and like i said it's a top three draft so if somebody is trying to trade up they probably trying to trade for the top three picks and not number four. So I'm excited about the timelines, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's why I end off because my voice is gone. Hopefully by tomorrow when this Dallas Warriors game go on, I will be completely okay and I don't have to cut every 30 seconds to cough. <laughs> All right, I'm just, I'm done.